What's going on guys? Today I want to teach you how to replace a tire off a small garden tractor, off a small tow long trailer, which you can use this technique as well for motorcycle and car tires, but they're a bit of a bigger job. So this tire is clearly shot, it's dry rotted, it's not going to hold air. Uh, because it's so deformed and dry rotted, it's not even worth, worth uh, placing a tube in there. Uh, if your tire really isn't damaged, per se, uh, say it's not holding air well and you've tried to fix it flat and it's still leaking but the tire's in pretty good condition, uh, what you can do is put a tube in here and that's a bit cheaper than replacing the tire completely but this tire is completely shot so we're going to put a new tire on here. Uh, now there's going to be a couple challenges with this. Uh, to start it's going to be challenging to break the tire off the bead of the rim. So uh, this is the bead of the rim. It's kind of the out outward or outmost part of the rim and that's where the tire actually sits on here I have another tire which I just replaced and I'll show you what I'm talking about so this is the other tire and if I pull back the tire a little bit you can see this inner portion of the rim that is what we call the bead so uh, the tire is seated very firmly on that bead or that inner portion of the rim and removing that and resealing the tire on the bead is going to be the biggest challenge like I was trying to explain. So in order to do this job, we're going to need a couple tools. We're going to need some tire spoons or tire irons. I got these from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. These are 16 inches. Uh, they're solid steel. Uh, Amazon sells a couple varieties of these. You know, I cheaped out. I got a cheap set. I think these cost me under $20. They do have another variety of tire irons and tire handles that are similar to screwdrivers as where they have a handle on one end and then a prying lever on the other side. I didn't like those because the steel seemed a bit thinner and additionally if you buy a solid tire iron like this you're going to get thicker steel and you have different contours on either end so I recommend you have three of these. If you can invest the money in a higher quality set, I'd recommend that. Um, from what I've found with these smaller ones, they work just fine. But every now and then, I'll nick a little piece of metal off these. So uh, it's just handy to have a little piece of sandpaper to flatten that out. So before you change tire, or, or after you finish using these, and you plan to uh, you know, keep resetting the tire or whatever, just make sure you check for any little burrs and sand those down. So that's that. I'd also recommend you have two of these little vice grip style pliers. They're going to be a big help for uh, putting the tire back on here. So also going to need an air compressor. I'd recommend you having some blast equipment, which we'll get into that later. So headphones, safety glasses, a blast shield. I, I think I said air compressor and you're going to need a little bit of starting fluid and that's how we're going to reseat the tire on the bead. So first thing we're going to do is break the bead and we'll try a little technique over here and uh, I'll show you how this is done. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the valve stem cap. You're going to need one of these valve stem tools or valve core tools, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to take this end, we're going to insert it into this valve stem, and we're going to turn it counterclockwise, and we're going to remove the valve core. Now this is the valve, which it's pretty much a check valve. It only allows air to go in the tire one way. And we need to remove this because when we're pressing down on the tire and trying to remove it off the bead, um, there's going to be some compressed air in there and that air needs a place to escape so it's going to be able to escape out the valve stem. Okay, so the next step is we're going to need to pop that tire off the bead of the rim and pretty much always that tire is seated very firmly on the bead of that rim so as I mentioned earlier, this is why this step is uh, particularly challenging. So this is a technique that I've just kind of come up with and it works. What I do is I take two vice grip style pliers and as you can see I push down on the tire with the heel of my foot in order to seat that uh, plier as, as far down on the rim as possible. And then I just take a 2x4 and I start kind of pumping it with my foot. It may not be the best method but it works.
Okay, so once we have the tire popped off the bead, now we need to remove the tire from the rim. So we're gonna take our spoons. I like to use this bowl shaped end. Get a get, get in here. There we go. Okay, so once you have the tire pop from the bead, now we need to remove the tire off the rim. So this is where our tire irons or tire spoons are gonna come in handy. So I like to take this bowl shaped end. What you're gonna do is hook the tire. You may need to set up a couple of these tire irons in here prior to prying. Uh, not sure how this is gonna go. So yeah, hook that bowl on the inner Part of the tire, you're gonna pry back, set your next bar. I'm gonna set another bar in here too, so we're ready to go with that one. Okay, so I'm gonna pry with this bar. Try with the next bar. Okay. And that is one side popped off. So now we gotta flip it over. Now we gotta go from the inside. This is a little bit more challenging. So what I'm gonna do now is take one of my vice grip pliers. I'm gonna clamp the inside of the rim. By the way, do not do this. Do not uh, clamp the rim if you're worried about scratching it because this is outdoor lawn equipment I don't really care if it has a scratch or two on there Okay so Now I'm gonna try and set two spoons in here like to send set one a little bit deep and the other one a bit deeper so start with the first one hold that leverage work the second spoon into the rim deeper and we're pretty close just work it off the rest of the way and there we are not too bad at all Okay, so I have the rim as well as the new tire. Uh, before I put the new tire on there, I'm gonna take a brush, clean any crap or any uh, debris on the rim, inspect for any sharp pointy edges, look for any holes. Now's a good time to replace the valve stem, but everything appears to be in good shape here. So uh, You can lube up the tire if you so choose. There are specific products just for that. What I'm gonna do here is pinch the inside rim to help hold my progress. Take a bar and just start working this tire on here. May take a couple tries. Okay, so I got a good bite there. Set my pliers to hold that progress. Get in here. Get another bite. Inch my pliers down. So I've been out of camera a little bit there. Put pliers down, hold progress. Okay, so I can't get the tire on the rest of the way with this big spoon, so I'm going to flip the tool around and use this slight curve. Hook it in here, get a little bite. And she's 
almost there. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we have the new tires on the rims, and now we need to reseat the tire on the bead. So before we do that, we're going to reinstall or replace the valve core, so that way, any air we put inside these tires, it'll hold. So the issue currently is if we tried to fill these tires up with air right now, the air would escape. And the reason is because the tires are not seated on the inner portion, or excuse me, the outer portion of this rim known as the bead. So air will just escape out the rim right here. So we need to reseat the tire and expand it and seat it out on the bead. Now, I've tried doing this with a ratchet strap. A ratchet strap's a good trick, uh, but it hasn't worked for me with these tires. So uh, what you can do, you can take a ratchet strap, put it around the tire and cinch it down and that'll kind of squeeze the tire and kind of help force it out onto the rim. But I have not had any luck with that. So we're gonna use an old mechanics trick. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some starting fluid. We're gonna hold the tire down spray maybe a two, three second squirt of starting fluid inside the tire, uh, of course with blast protection on. We're gonna light a match or use a torch or whatever. We're going to ignite the starting fluid inside. And the idea behind that is the rapid explosion and expansion of air will blow the tire up very rapidly, reseat it on the bead, and then we need to put air back into this tire rather rapidly. Uh, so the tire doesn't slip off the bead. So this is going to happen pretty fast. Let me put some blast protection on. Let me get my torch set up and the air system going and then uh, we'll get back with you. Alright, so everything there happened pretty fast, but again, to recap what just happened, we sprayed ether inside the tire, we lit it on fire, sometimes we had to give it a little kick uh, to allow that fire to get down into the tire. Uh, the, the rapid expansion of the ether lighting on fire expanded the molecules in the air, therefore creating a, a high pressure which reseated or, or pushed the tire back on the rim, and then we filled it with air very rapidly. Uh, to make sure the tire didn't sink back down to the rim. So I just also checked the uh, proper inflation pressure for these tires. It says up to 20, uh, 28 PSI, so I'm going to run them at 24, which I just did. I'm going to throw caps back on the valve stems, and these tires are good to go. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video or found it helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Um, links in the description below for some of the products I used, and subscribe for more. Thank <laughs> you.